Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I wanted to talk about three pros and cons of working in academia. For a large part of my MBBS life and postgraduate life, I always dreamed that I would be a part of an academic institute. In medicine, academic institutions are basically teaching hospitals. So you have hospitals attached to medical colleges. And this position represented to me the most stable job form. But only after working in academia for now almost four and a half years, I have an idea of what it really means and what are the advantages and what are the sacrifices that we make. So without further ado, let's get into it. These pros and cons are based on my experiences. For me, the number one advantage or the number one pro of working in academic institutions is teaching. When I joined medicine, honestly, it never registered to me that doctors were also teachers and that, you know, new students learn from old doctors. And I didn't really think about where future doctors learned from. But teaching has honestly been the biggest surprise for me because the kind of relationship that a student and a teacher has is something that's very pure and divine. And the only way you can experience it is if you've actually been in one. It's kind of like a mentor-mentee relationship. The joy that you feel when your student accomplishes a task or when a student actually learns something based on what kind of information you have given. And even the other side of things, you know, sometimes students will come up with the most interesting and most stimulating questions questions that as faculty you'll actually go back learn and stay updated so that you can find solutions to these new and interesting questions posed by them to be stumped by your own student is both humbling and joyful at the same time it's really fun so the first and most important joy according to me of working in academia is teaching and my students you know like i absolutely love going for tea and coffee with my students simply i'll keep asking them you know in the middle of my rounds i'll be like come let's go for chai let's go for coffee because it's so fun like you take them out and you all bond and it creates a sense of community and if you guys have seen some of my vlogs you know that i'm so into that kind of thing and to kind of form a bond and they like come to you with their problems and you go to them for feedback the whole thing is super fun and yeah i absolutely love it if I ever leave academia, then this would be the one thing that I really miss because like, I don't think any other relationship could possibly fulfill what this relationship fulfills for a person, you know. Um, but yeah, so teaching is great. The second advantage, according to me, is the freedom to kind of pursue your area of interest. Now, let's say you're interested in geriatrics. Okay? Uh, in a teaching institute, it's very easy to get funding. I mean, relatively easy to get funding. And you can start your own clinic. You will have uh, all the other department faculty willing to refer to you patients for them to get evaluated. When you compare it in a private setup, where let's say you want to start and build your practice by yourself, the investment, the money, the referrals, all of that is much slower and more difficult. Whereas within a teaching institute, it's much easier. Within academic institutions, you already have established systems to start clinics, to develop a research protocol, to build a project, to establish a cohort. All of these things have already been done. There's a system in place. There are protocols in place. You just need to find the right person, ask them, they'll guide you and you can pretty easily start any clinic and they're usually very encouraging of academic uh, pursuits. And yeah, you don't need to fund it. They'll fund it for you. There's a process involved in it, but you can get that done and they'll usually fund it and it's pretty straightforward. You can also get other healthcare workers to support you in your team. You can have nursing staff, psychiatric social workers, a psychologist can get posted with you. So if you ask for these, usually the entire system is in place, provided you're willing to do some of the groundwork. That's it. The same holds true even for specific research in a field of your choice. If you're interested, then you just have to come up with an idea. You can either present it in a scientific committee, then get the ethics clearance and start doing research. The, there's a system for each and everything. The third advantage, according to me, is that you have a relatively fixed income and a stable salary and a stable job, especially if you have got this coveted tenured position. So if you're a permanent faculty, you kind of know where your next income is going to come from. You know how much you're going to get, which means you can manage your expenses, your investments, your savings plans. There is so much financial planning that you can do and automate that it's one thing less you need to worry about. Having your finances sorted can be really relaxing and it's such a sense of security. You can plan vacations, you can plan trips, all of these things. If you know exactly how much you're going to get every month and you get your income pretty consistently and that's really great. 
but I must tell though that this is more true for stable permanent positions. If you are in a contact position, then there is still some sort of an insecurity. Now coming to the cons of working in an academic institute. The first con is the working hours. Yes, you heard me right. You must be like, how is it more in academia? Academia is a nine to five job. You know what? Hear me out. Academia in teaching hospitals is slightly different from academia in other fields, which are not medicine related. In medical fields, what would happen is like, suppose when you go to go in the morning to your hospital, you'll have to see patients, you'll have classes, you'll have meetings to do. So a lot of work gets done between 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., which is technically your working hours, right? But a lot of other work that needs to be done for your career growth ends up happening in your personal time. Now, what I mean by this is, this could include things like writing a protocol for a research idea that you had. You may find time within nine to five, or a lot of times that's not possible. So you end up doing it after five at your home in your laptop. Similarly, if you want to publish an article, what happens is 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. I have a lot of other work within the campus. And so I'm unable to find my laptop, sit there and actually write the article at work. I come back home, I have my coffee and then until 7 or 8 p.m. I end up writing the article. And then, of course, there are other steps that follows, right? You'll have to make the corrections. You'll have to send it and prepare the formats for the particular journal, etc., etc. So that takes a lot of time. Another thing that takes time is actually preparing for the academic classes. Most of the time during 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. you'll have your classes and to prepare for these classes, which is preparing the slides, preparing the materials, if there's any take home materials, if there's any questions you want to ask, any question paper that you need to set. All this usually does not happen between 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Trust me, I have tried very hard to fix it and try to finish it 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. at my hospital itself. But it is difficult and, it, and you end up taking work home. Sometimes even on Sundays, you have to do a little bit of work, maybe one or two hours of work. You have to sit with your laptop and do it. There are also deadlines sometimes, which you cannot finish if you work only 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. You will have to work more hours in order to meet deadlines. And these are not hours that you are paid for. So it is from your personal time. You'll sit in front of the computer, you'll do the work and submit it. Like to give an example, I once had a deadline where I had to write a review article in about two to three weeks time. It is a challenging task. I, maybe some people are able to do it, but for me to do the review of literature, make the table and then synthesize the evidence, write it takes more time. And um, those days, particularly I was working a lot of times between 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. So sometimes it will go even until 12 a.m. So these things will happen once in a while. But you know, like if you have like one hour in between work and you need to go to the bank or you need to go to the post office, then your employer will allow for that also. Uh, so you need to kind of strike a balance there and uh, figure it out. There is a pressure to publish. Although this is different in different institutions, some institutions are happy if you do two or three per year, but in other institutions, your peers will be publishing 100, 150 publications every year. Good quality research takes time. To come up with a novel idea and to execute it until the end takes years. And uh, for it to get published, it takes some more time. But we have set targets in terms of how many publications we need to do every year. And if we don't meet those recommended standards, then sometimes our bonuses and our certain privileges will get affected by it. Your peers will be publishing lots. They'll be doing 100, 150 publications, and you will be doing one or two per year. That can sometimes get difficult to manage and you will compare. And there is a sense of pressure that develops on this desire to publish. So what happens, then you will do a lot of derivative work, make compromises in that sense. You might work on something you're not interested in just for the sake of getting a publication. And these things are kind of traps which will lead to unhappiness on the longer run. It is challenging, you know, you kind of need to strike the balance because on one end you need to finish the X number of publications per year. But on the other end, also you want to work on novel and interesting ideas for your soul, right? So it is a balance that you need to kind of strike. People won't stop with just one kind of research. So you'll start one kind of research and you'll be really happy. Somebody else will do collaborative research. Somebody else will do a larger funded project. So these things will keep happening and you have to kind of find your own zone and keep working at it and find joy in what you're doing. Last challenge in academia is that tenured positions are really saturated. Especially in good cities, if you want to join a good teaching hospital, if you're looking into central institutes, if you're looking into excellent medical colleges, then it is saturated. 
and um, tenured positions are difficult to come by and contract positions don't feel secure for long term because after you finish your PG you're looking to get married you want to settle and those kind of things are also in your mind so it is a little scary I said in a previous video of mine where just like how getting an MBBS seat was challenging and difficult and competitive even academia is competitive so getting into MD is competitive joining a medical college is competitive and once you join the pressure to publish is real and that's also competitive so it can kind of be endless so I say this thing where it needs to be that your degree and your looking for a job needs to be timed well with the available vacancy of an institute because sometimes you will be unemployed and there'll be no vacancy and then when there is a vacancy you are settled somewhere else this happens so often another thing that is so frustrating is that because you know that there is so much competition and there are so many people who have so many publications and such a good CV you're not really in a position to like negotiate your salary as it is in the West you know how you hear about in the West where they negotiate their salary and um, they have so much value to themselves that they're able to demand more of income here unfortunately it's not like that because I know that there are 10 other people who are equally or even better qualified waiting for the same job at a lower price and so if I leave this job then they are going to come and get it and I'm going to be unemployed so it, it's very very challenging and uh, that's something that often you will come by so yeah those are my three pros and cons of working in academia if you're still here please subscribe to my channel i've also recently started a buy me a coffee account if you're interested in supporting my channel by buying me a cup of coffee then definitely check that out the link is in the description bye bye take care to have blinders and just work on what you're interested in you and my soul that can be unfulfilling for your soul.